Welcome to Stan X Matter Electronics, how magnets and reed switches interact with each other, forming a sensing function training module. This module will define key terms for magnets and reed switches. The module will also describe how the positioning of the magnet's north and south poles relative to the reed switch produces different magnetic field arrays. Understanding these magnetic field arrays will give insight into how the magnet and reed switch form their sensing function. Permanent magnets have a consistent non-varying magnetic field that has a north and south pole associated with them. The magnets come in different materials, rare earth, alnico, and ferrite. They all come in different sizes and shapes and have different magnetic strengths. Rare earth are the strongest. Alnico are the most stable and ferrite are the least expensive. The magnetic strength is generally measured in gauze or millitesla. A reed switch is a small electromechanical device generally having two ferromagnetic leads that are separated internally in a hermetically sealed glass envelope. When the reed switch, which comes in varying sizes, is brought into a magnetic field, the reed leads will close creating a switching function. Closing the reed contacts takes a certain magnetic strength measured in millitesla or ampere turns. This is called the pull-in point. Removing the magnet, the contacts will open at some point. This is called the drop-out point. Hysteresis is another useful parameter. Hysteresis is just the ratio of the pull-in divided by the drop-out. Ferromagnetic materials are materials that become magnetized when they enter or are influenced by a magnetic field. Iron, nickel, and cobalt are the most common ferromagnetic materials. Reed switch sensors are chiefly comprised of a magnet and a reed switch. The reed switches are packaged in several ways depending upon the application. Since the reed switch carries out a switching function, it must be directly or remotely connected to an electrical circuit. This can be accomplished by having the reed switch directly mounted to a PCB or have wires attached to the reed switch packaging remotely connected to an electrical circuit. The magnet, on the other hand, is usually packaged or mounted to a moving mechanism. This moving mechanism will bring it into the sphere of influence of the reed switch packaging. To better understand this sphere of influence, we will delve into it in a more detailed manner. We will first look at two-dimensional magnetic field arrays. In two dimensions, it is much easier to see and understand the magnetic effects on the reed switch and magnet relationship. When the magnet is parallel to the reed switch, three lobes are generated showing magnetic sensitivity arrays. Two are on the sides of the switch and one is centered over the gap of the reed switch. Each lobe shows a solid line which indicates where the contacts will close once the magnet crosses that boundary. The dropout or contacts opening will occur when the magnet is withdrawn passing over the dotted lines. Since the lines of force of a magnet are invisible to the eye, these lines represent the boundaries where the pull-in or reed switch closure and drop-out or reed contact opening occurs. The same result would occur if the reed switch was moved relative to a stationary magnet. Reversing the polarity of the magnet will have no effect on the three magnetic sensitivity lobes. Permanent magnets produce invisible lines of flux that leave the north pole and re-enter the south pole. This magnetic flux interacts with the magnetic sensitivity lobes of the reed switch. These invisible lines of flux represent the hidden force behind a magnet. And it is these lines of flux that produce the force that closes the contacts. When the magnet is removed and the lines of flux are no longer influencing the reed switch, the magnetic forces are no longer present and the contacts will open. Again, when the magnet is parallel to the reed switch, three lobes are present showing the generated arrays of magnetic sensitivity. In this case, the magnet is centered over the central and strongest lobe. When the magnet moves downward and reaches the pull-in line, the reed contacts will close. As the magnet is withdrawn vertically and upwards, the magnet will reach the dotted dropout line. When this occurs, the reed contacts will open. 
This represents a read sensor cycle, showing the sensing closure point and the sensing opening point. As long as the magnet is within the pull-in boundary, the contacts will remain closed. Once the magnet is withdrawn and outside the dotted dropout lines, the contacts will always be open. The center lobe is the strongest and will offer the greatest sensing distance when compared to the two side lobes. This is another example where the magnet is still parallel to the reed switch and the three lobes are still present with their magnetic sensitivity arrays. In this case, the magnet is positioned offset to the axis of the reed switch on the left and far enough away so that the magnet will only enter the center lobe as it moves left to right. As the magnet reaches the pull-in line, the reed contacts will close. As the magnet is withdrawn back to the left, the magnet will reach the dotted dropout line. When this occurs, the reed contacts will open. This represents a reed sensor cycle showing the sensing closure point and the sensing opening point. As long as the magnet is within the pull-in boundary, the contacts will remain closed. Once the magnet is withdrawn and outside the dotted dropout lines, the contacts will always be open. This is another example where the magnet is still parallel to the reed switch with the three lobes still present with their magnetic sensitivity array. In this case, the magnet is positioned along the axis of the reed switch. As the magnet moves left to right, it will enter the first lobe on the left and close the contacts. As the magnet is withdrawn, moving back to the left, the contacts will open. This is another example where the magnet is still parallel to the reed switch with three lobes still present with their magnetic sensitivity array. In this case, the magnet is positioned along the axis of the reed switch. In this case, the magnet is moved left to right and passes through to the right end of the reed switch and beyond. During the magnet's travel, the reed contacts will close and open three times as it passes through each of the three lobes. Mounting the reed switch perpendicular to the reed switch will have a dramatic effect on the magnetic sensitivity lobes compared to when the magnet is parallel to the reed switch. Now there are four lobes and all are on the ends of the reed switch. Bringing the magnet offset from the switch axis from left to right into the upper first lobe will cause the contacts to close once it reaches the solid line pull-in lobe. Withdrawing the magnet in a similar manner and passing through the dotted dropout lobe will cause the contacts to open. The magnet, when perpendicular to the reed switch, will always have to be offset from the axis of the reed switch for closure and opening to occur. So care must be taken when positioning the magnet relative to the reed switch. Four magnetic sensitivity lobes are present when the magnet is perpendicular to the reed switch. With the magnet offset from the axis of the reed switch, it is brought in from left to right, entering the upper left lobe. It continues its movement entirely through the reed switch to the other side and beyond. In this case, the contacts will close and open two times as the magnet passes through both the upper and lower lobes. Again, four magnetic sensitivity lobes are present when the magnet is perpendicular to the reed switch. Now, we bring the magnet from left to right along the axis of the reed switch completely through to the other end of the reed switch. In this case, the contacts will never close. Again, the magnet is perpendicular to the reed switch. Now, we bring the magnet downward into the upper left lobe. Here, the contacts will close when they reach the solid pull-in line and when withdrawn upwards and the magnet passes through the dotted dropout line, the contacts will open. With the magnet perpendicular to the reed switch, the magnet is now brought downward into the upper left lobe, passing through it and then passing through the lower left lobe. Here the contacts will close when the magnet reaches the solid pull-in line of the upper left lobe. Continuing downward with the magnet, the contacts will open when the magnet passes through the dotted dropout line. Continuing further downward with the magnet, it will enter and cross the solid pull-in line of the lower left lobe, closing the contacts. As the magnet continues its trek downward, it crosses the dropout dotted lines and the contacts open. With the magnet perpendicular to the reed switch, the magnet is now brought downward through the center of the reed switch contacts. 
There are no lobes along the center of the reed switch and therefore the contacts never close. Let's take a look again when the magnet is parallel to the reed switch with the three lobes of magnetic sensitivity arrays. We now have placed the magnet in the middle of the center lobe and centered over the reed switch contacts. We know in this case, since the magnet is within the pull-in lobe, the contacts will be closed. Now let's see what happens when we rotate the magnet about its axis by 90 degrees. Rotating the magnet from parallel to perpendicular will cause the contacts to go from a closed state to an open state. If one continued to rotate the magnet, the contacts would open and close after each 90 degree rotation. Many applications use this approach to count rotations of mechanisms that in turn translate the rotations to specific functions. One common application is in water filters. As the water flows, a magnet is rotated. Counting the rotations allows one to keep track of the amount of water filtered, eventually indicating it's time to change the filter. With the magnet parallel to the reed switch, the three lobes are present, showing the generated arrays of magnetic sensitivity. The magnet is positioned within the pull-in lobe, so that ordinarily this position would close the contacts. However, in this case, a magnetic shunt is positioned between the magnet and the reed switch. The magnetic shunt is comprised of a ferromagnetic material, nickel, iron, or cobalt. In this case, the magnetic sensitivity lobes remain the same, but the magnetic flux lines emanating from the magnet travel almost entirely within the magnetic shunt instead of through the reed switch. Without the magnetic flux lines traveling through the reed switch, the contacts will remain open. Here the magnet is still parallel to the reed switch where the three lobes are present. Again, the magnet is still positioned within the pull-in lobe. Now the magnetic shunt is removed from its position between the magnet and the reed switch. Now the magnetic flux lines emanating from the magnet will travel through the reed switch, closing the contacts. In this case, the sensing action is accomplished without any movement of the magnet or the reed switch. This approach is used quite often in several sensing applications where the reed switch and the magnet are not allowed any movement. Sensing the closure of a seatbelt is a prime example. All we have presented in two dimensions carries over into the three-dimensional real world. The fields you have seen are the same. All we are adding is showing how the same fields look when adding that third dimension. When viewed in three dimensions, the magnetic flux lines emanating from the magnet look like a beer barrel keg. And also in three dimensions, with the magnet parallel to the reed switch, the center magnetic lobe arrays look like a donut, and the two outside lobes look more like a boxer's punching bag, the kind hung from the ceiling. Essentially, the fields from the magnet and the fields for the lobes are symmetrical when viewed in three dimensions. As seen in two dimensions, when the magnet is brought into one of the lobes, the reed switch contacts will close. Now as seen in three dimensions, the magnet can be brought into the lobes in any spherical direction for contact closure to occur. Here the magnet is moved into the sphere of influence of the lobes of the reed switch, showing the closure and opening when the magnet enters the lobes and passes through them. The change in lighting signifies the closing and opening of the reed switch contacts. Reed switch sensor applications are increasing every day. Knowing the details behind how they work can offer much insight into their proper operation. Reed switch sensors are comprised of a reed switch and a magnet. Reed switches are packaged appropriately for their application. The magnet is usually attached to a moving mechanism that allows the magnet to be brought into the reed switch sphere of influence. Here, the magnetic flux interacts with the sensitivity lobe arrays, creating the switching function. Understanding their influence with each other is key to a successful read sensor application.